Okay, so in this video, we are starting our new chapter called as IA-16 Tangible Assets. All right. We will have a look uh, at some concepts first and then we will also solve some kit questions um, provided in our Captain Kit. All right. <clears throat> so first of all, uh, let's begin with uh, what is non-current asset. Our chapter name is tangible non-current assets. So we all know what is non-current asset. You have studied in previous chapters a uh, very basic definition of non-current asset. Non-current asset which has uh, a life more than 12 months and is used in the business, right? For example, plant and equipment, motor vehicle, fixture and fitting, right? So we have a lot of non-current assets and we know that non-current asset is not something that we use to resell it. Non-current asset is always used in the business to help our operations, to assist us in our operations, right? For example, our motor vehicle, we use in the business, motor vehicle, we don't sell the motor vehicle in our business, but we use the motor vehicle to assist the operations in our business, like to deliver goods to customers or something like that, right? In the same way, fixture and fittings can be the example, plan and equipment and every kind of non-current asset, right? Secondly, uh, non-current assets are tangible. Now, what does tangible mean? Tangible mean uh, that they exist physically, right? like they uh, exist physically and we can touch them. That's what tangible mean. All right. So now let's come on to the definition of uh, property plan and equipment. Basically property plan and equipment is our uh, tangible asset, right? So the definition is these are tangible assets held for production or supply of goods, rendering of services or for admin purposes and are used more than one accounting period. Now you don't need to remember the definition, uh, but in, uh, more than one accounting period, like as I talked about, uh, talk, talk that uh, you can use non-current assets more than 12 months, right? Because the life is more than 12 months. Our current assets have a life of less than 12 months and our non-current assets have a life of more than 12 months. So anything that a business is using more than 12 months is our non-current asset, right? Okay, so now what is the double entry of uh, non-current asset? We have studied double entry in a lot of detail before. So what is the double entry when we buy non-current asset? We will debit non-current asset, right? And we will credit cash or payable. If we buy non-current asset on cash, then our credit will be cash. And if, if we buy non-current asset on credit, then our credit should be payable, all right? Okay, so how do we record non-current asset in our accounting records? Now, initially we record non-current asset at cost. Now, what does at recording at cost mean? So, at recording at cost means that uh, the purchase price of non-current asset, right? Uh, like how much you purchased for non-current, for example, you purchased the non-current asset for $100, right? So you will mention the purchase price, delivery cost of the non-current asset, installation cost, legal cost, trial run cost, irrecoverable taxes, directly attributable cost. Now, what are these terms? For now, we don't, we don't need to uh, go into detail of these, but that's what we mean by recording at cost, that everything, this everything is included when we are recording a non-current asset at cost, all right? We will look uh, examples and we will solve uh, many examples for this and we will also uh, solve kit questions. So you will have much more clarity when we move on to the questions. All right. Okay. 
So now uh, we are moving on to depreciation. Now, what is depreciation? Now, depreciation is uh, first. Uh, I will come on to the definition, and then I will explain you what is depreciation. All right. The allocation of depreciable amount, cost minus residual value of an asset over its useful life. All right. Okay. So now, what is depreciation? For example, uh, you bought a car in 2020, all right? And the cost of the car was, for example, $1,000, all right? Okay, you bought a car in 2020 and cost was $1,000, all right? Now, now, currently we are standing in 2024. So for example, you use the car for four years, right? You use the car for four years. So now, tell me, what is the value of the car today? Like, is it, like if you want to sell the car today, uh, for how many dollars you can sell the car today? Can you sell it for $1,000? The answer is no. Why? Because the value of the car has fallen down. Why it has fallen down? Because you use the car for four years. Now it is not the new car as you bought in like brand new car in 2020. Now, obviously, the car is depreciated, like its value is depreciated. Now you cannot sell the car for $1,000. Obviously you will uh, sell the car according to its use. Like if you use too much, then obviously uh, the, the drop in value will be too much. Like for example, you can sell the car for $500 maybe, uh, or you can sell the car for $600 maybe, all right? So the point uh, to explain is uh, to explain is that, for example, you are selling the car for $500, all right? No, let's say you are selling the car for, uh, sell the car for $600, all right? Because obviously its value has uh, fallen down. You cannot sell the car after using for four years. You cannot sell the car for the same price that you bought for, right? Logical. So you are now selling the car for $600, all right? So what was the drop in value? The drop in value was the difference between the cost you bought the car and today the value of the car is 600, right? So what is the drop in value? The drop in value is our obviously 1000 minus 600, which is 400, okay? Okay, so drop in value of the car is 400, okay? Again, why is there a drop in value? Because obviously you bought a car for $1,000 in 2020. You used the car for four years. So obviously the, the value of the car is no, not exactly what you bought for, obviously, right? So you use the car, uh, the car was used so much that the value now is 600. Now you can sell the car for 600, right? The drop in value due to usage is 400, right? So this amount of 400, that's what we call as depreciation, all right? We will come on to that later. How do we calculate the depreciation? Mm -hmm. There are two methods to calculate the depreciation, but for now, uh, th this was a simple explanation of, of what is the term depreciation, all right? I hope you got it. Okay, so now there are 
two methods to calculate the depreciation. All right, there are two methods to calculate the depreciation. We will directly move on to the example uh, before coming on to this theory part. All right, I will come on to this theory part later after the example. All right. So actually, there are two methods of calculating the depreciation. The first method is straight line method. And the second method is reducing balance method. All right. So first of all, uh, we will directly come on to the example of straight line method. How do we calculate depreciation using straight line method? Okay. So here is an example. Sara LTD purchased an asset on 1 January 2022 for 35,000. All right. Sara LTD purchased an asset for 35,000 on what date? 1 January 2022. All right. The asset has a useful life of 10 years after which it can be scrapped for 5,000. All right. Like after using it for 10 years, you can scrap it for $5,000. Like you can sell it for $5,000. All right. Now, find the depreciation for the year ended 31 December 2022 and 31 December 2023. All right. Okay. Okay. So, now what they are saying is, is that we bought an asset for one, gen, uh, we bought an asset on 1 January 2022. Right. They are saying us that uh, find the depreciation of the year ended 31 December 2022. What does it mean? It means that you bought the asset on 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 2. All right. And the first year was ended on 31 December 2022. Right. Okay. This was our first year. And they are telling us for uh, to also find for the second year, which is our 31 December uh, 2023. Now, obviously, our second year will be 1 1 2023 till 31 December 2023. This is our second year. We are using the asset, right? Okay. So, now, how do we find the depreciation using straight line method? All right. Okay, let's have a look at an solution now. Using the straight line method, how do we find the depreciation? So the formula we use when we are using straight line method to find the depreciation is cost minus scrap value brackets divided by useful life, all right? The useful life of asset. Like, what is the life of asset? All right, it's given in the question, 10 years, all right? Okay. So now let's apply the formula. Simple, let's apply the formula. First of all, uh, what is our cost? Our cost is $35,000, right? Given in the question. Our scrap value is $5,000 given in the question. All right. So 35,000 minus 5,000. All right. That's what we do. Right. And that's our, uh, that, give, that gives us 30,000. All right. 35,000 minus 5,000 gives us 30,000. All right. And we need to divide this by useful life given in the question. Useful life is 10 years. So we divide 30,000 by 10. That gives us how much? That gives us 30,000 divided by 10. That gives us 3,000 per year. This is the depreciation. All right. We get the depreciation 3,000 per year. All right. <clears throat> okay. So what will be the our what will be our answer if we use if we calculate the depreciation using our straight line method? It will be three thousand per year. All right, 
So we will write here for the first year, first January 2022 to 31 December 2022, what was our depreciation? 3000. All right. And in the same way, it will stay constant for the second year as well because using the straight line method, the depreciation stays constant every year. All right. So for the second year, 1 January 2023 to 31 December 2023, our depreciation will remain the same, 3000. All right. So it's the uh, our answer is 3000 depreciation per year. All right. That's how we find the depreciation using the straight line method. All right. Now, if we now if we uh, come back to the theory part of straight line method, so first of all, it is written that depreciation is charged on cost of asset, uh, like we charged on the cost of asset, right? The second point is depreciation will remain constant. We have seen that in the first year it was three thousand, and it will stay constant throughout, like second year, third year, fourth year, every year it will be three thousand. All right. It's only when we are using straight line method, all right? And how, how do we calculate depreciation? Cost minus trap value divided by useful life. That's how we calculate the depreciation, right? So that's the theory for the straight line method. Okay, now we will look on to the reducing balance method. It's a bit uh, more difficult than straight line. Straight line is pretty simple because it gives you constant depreciation every year. But in reducing balance, uh, the depreciation is not constant every year. All right. So now let's have a look on reducing balance method. Hmm. Okay. So first of all, um, I will show you the example for the uh, reducing balance method, and then we will, uh, in the same way, I will show you the theory for reducing balance method, all right? So now the second part of this question was, uh, the first part was using the straight line method that we have already done. And now we are moving on to the second part, which is using the reducing balance method at 25% per annum. Per annum means uh, per year, all right? So they are telling us that uh, calculate the depreciation using the reducing balance, uh, reducing balance method and the depreciation charge is 25% per year, all right? So now let's calculate the depreciation using the reducing balance method. Okay, so here it is. We are done with the first part, all right? This is done. Okay, now we move on to the second part. This one. Okay. So now we calculate the depreciation using reducing balance method. So now tell me what was our cost? Our cost of asset was 35,000, right? In the question, it's given in the question. The cost of asset was 35,000, right? So the first step is you will multiply the cost of asset with 25% because we were given uh, here that we need to use 25% per annum for reducing balance method, all right? So first step is 35,000, the cost multiply the percentage given for reducing balance method with this 25%. So what do we get? We get 8750, all right? We get 8750 when we multiply 35,000 with 25%, all right? We get 8750. Okay, now this 8750 is the depreciation for the first year, all right? This 8750 is the depreciation for the first year, all right? What was our first year? If you look, have a look at our top, our first year was year ended 31 December 2022. That means our first year was 1112022. Sorry, 2022 till 31 December 
2022. All right. So this was our first year and our depreciation is 8750 for the first year. All right. Okay, now let's move forward. Now, how do we calculate the depreciation for second year? In straight line method, our depreciation was constant every year, all right? But that's not the case here. The depreciation won't be constant here every year. So how do we calculate now? This is the question, all right? So what do we need? What do we do now is that Okay, what was our cost? Our cost was 35,000, right? Okay. Our cost was 35,000, right? And what was our depreciation for the first year? Our depreciation for the first year was 8750, right? So if we subtract 35,000 from 8750, so what do we get? we get 26250 all right so now what is this 26250 okay now this 26250 is our carrying value at the year end at the first year end Okay, so 26250 was our carrying value at the end of first year. Okay, now what is carrying value? The carrying value is that, uh, what was the actual value of your car, of, uh, sorry, of your asset after using it for one year? Like you use the asset for one year, right? So you depreciated that asset at 25% and you subtracted from 35,000 minus the depreciation 8750 so now what was what was the carrying value carrying value means the actual value of the car after usage of one year all right so now your value of the car at the end of one year uh, sorry at the at the end of first year the value of your asset was 26250 all right the value of your car was 26250 at the end of first year that's what we called carrying value all right so we got the carrying value, right? So now we, how do we take out the depreciation for second year? In the same way, what we will do is, now we will multiply this 26250 with 35%, sorry, 25%, and we will get the depreciation for second year, all right? Uh, so I will move on to the here. So I will explain you from here now. So for example, <clears throat> our first year depreciation was 8750 right so we subtracted 8750 from 35000 and we got 26250 all right and 26250 was our depreciation at the end of first year okay our end of first year was 31 december 2022 so our carrying value on 31 december 2022 was 26250 all right i hope that's clear till here Okay, so how do we now calculate the depreciation for the second year? Simple, you will do 26250, the carrying value, multiply 25%. We get the depreciation for the second year, that is 6563. If we round off this, so we get 6563. That's what we wrote here, 6563, our depreciation for the second year. All right, here it is written, this is our depreciation for the second year. All right. Okay. Now, what was the carrying value at the end of second year? 
simple. If we subtract six five six three from two six two five zero, we will get one nine six eight seven, the carrying value at the end of second year. All right, our second year was thirty one December two thousand twenty three. All right, so for this year, we uh, at the end of this year we get the carrying value one nine six eight seven. How do we get this? Two six two five zero. That was carrying value at the end of first year minus the depreciation six five six three. We get one nine six eight seven. The carrying value at the end of second year. All right. So now what we do is uh, again, uh, if we need to calculate the depreciation for the third year as well. So what do we need? Uh, what do we do, do now? We will use the carrying value of end of second year, which is one nine six eight seven multiply twenty five percent. We will get four nine two two if we round this off. So four nine two two is our depreciation for the third year. All right, here it is written four nine two two the depreciation for the third year. All right. And if we want to take out the carrying value at the end of third year, what is our end of third year? 31 December 2024. So the carrying value on the 31 December 2024 will be 14765. How do we get this? Simple. Uh, we will subtract 4922 from 19687. We will get 14765 as our carrying value at the end of third year, which is our 31 December 2024. All right. So I hope that's clear up till now. Okay, so the, our first method was straight line method and our second method was reducing balance method, right? So in our first method, we saw that our depreciation was 3000 per year when we used straight line method, right? We took out our depreciation was 3000 per year, right? So if using the straight line, I ask you that what was the carrying value of our asset at the end of first year using the straight line? So how do you take out the carrying value? Simple. The cost was 35,000 initially, right? On 1 January 2022, our cost was 35,000, right? So we just subtract 3,000 depreciation and we get the carrying value 32,000 at the end of first year. With this 31 December 2022, you get the carrying value 32,000, all right? And again, uh, you subtract the depreciation for the second year with the same 3,000 in the straight line method. You get the carrying value at the end of second year with this 29,000, all right? In the same way, you subtract the depreciation for the third year, which is again 3,000. You get the carrying value 26,000 at the end of third year, which is 31 December 2024. So for straight line method, it is pretty simple. Like you just subtract the depreciation. Uh, the depreciation is same for every year. So you just subtract the depreciation and you get the carrying value at the end of first year. Then you get the carrying value at the end of second year. And then you get the carrying value at the at the end of third year, all right? But for the reducing balance method, uh, you need to calculate new depreciation for every year. All right, so I hope this is clear. Okay, now I have given one question for your practice. 
uh, here is the question. All right. First, note down the question and then solve this by yourself using the same method that I have taught above for the first example. All right. What you need to take out in this for the first requirement, you need to tell what is the depreciation per year using straight line method and what will be the carrying value of the asset at uh, at year end 31 December 2022, at year end 31 December 2021, and then 31 December 2022. So for all these three years, you need to tell what is the carrying value at the end of the year, and you need to tell depreciation each year using the straight line method. And the requirement two is that what will be the depreciation using reducing balance method at 25% in first year, in second year, and in third year, and what will be the carrying value in all those three years, all right? So in the same way, you need to solve this question. And after you solve the question, uh, you can check your solution. Uh, this is the solution for the question, all right? So you should get this solution if, you're, if you have solved it rightly, all right? If you face any problems, you can contact out my number, WhatsApp number. Uh, this is my WhatsApp number. Sorry. Okay, just note down this number. If you face any trouble, you can contact on my WhatsApp. Okay, now let's move forward. Okay, so uh, I will suggest you to not move forward until and unless you solve this example that I provided you with and the solution is provided as well. So until you don't solve this one, uh, you won't be uh, pretty much clear with the concept that we just learned. So I would recommend you to solve this question and then move forward. So we will cover some questions from the kit, uh, like three to four questions uh, we are gonna solve right now from the kit. And uh, I'm going to cover tangible assets <clears throat> for both FA2 and F3, right? So I will cover both the, uh, both the concepts given in F3 as well and FA2 as well, right? So both the kits will be solved as well. So for now, um, let's move on to some questions. Uh, that you can solve right now. Okay, so in this question number 127, what is the purpose of charging depreciation in accounts of business? So basically they are asking what is the purpose of uh, charging the depreciation, right? So we just, uh, like here, we learned the depreciation, definition of uh, depreciation. If you read this, the allocation of depreciable amount over its useful life, right? So what can be the answer here? If you read option number A, that's absolute not the answer, right? It's, it's not really about uh, funds available or something like that. We didn't study like that, right? <clears throat> option B is also wrong because it's not that we need to bring it at market value. Okay, so and option C or sorry, option D is wrong because we have not learned anything about prudence concept. Option C is correct because to allocate to allocate the cost of non-current asset over the accounting periods expected to benefits uh, benefit from its use. All right, that's what we did, right? Uh, like I told you that after using the car for two years, the there will be drop down in the value. So like you took benefits from its use. So now the non current asset value will be dropped down. And over the pe accounting periods where well, we are calculating the depreciation, you have seen that uh, like first year we calculated the depreciation, then second year, the third year. So that's over the accounting period. So our option for this one is C. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, question number 128. I will suggest you to pause the video here and try this question by yourself. Uh, if you are unable to do it, then you watch the video and I will solve the question for you here, right? Okay, so for question number 128, uh, let's solve here.
Okay, I'm solving it right here. So what is our cost? Our cost is 100,000, right? And uh, it is expected to last for 10 years and have a scrap value of 10,000. Sorry, the, the cost is 100,000, scrap value is 10,000, and expected useful life is 10 years, right? Hmm. And now what's the requirement? They are asking the depreciation charged on the asset on the second year. All right. In its second year, they're asking for the second year, right? And uh, they have given us that company is going to depreciate asset on 20% reducing balance basis. All right. So first we will calculate the depreciation for the first year. And then we will take out the carrying value at the end of first year. And then we will calculate the depreciation for the second year. The same way we followed uh, in our notes previously. We will apply the same method and you will get the right answer. All right, so let's start. Okay, so using the reducing balance, what do we do? Uh, we multiply cost by 20%, right? This is our first step, right? When you are when we are using the reducing balance, we don't use a uh, residual value when we are using the re reducing balance, right? So hundred thousand into twenty percent is how much? This is twenty thousand, right? So our depreciation for the first year is twenty thousand. Okay, we need to take out the depreciation for the second year as per the requirement. So what do we de do now? First of all, we need to take out the carrying value at the end of first year, all right? Okay, how do we take out the carrying value at the end of first year? Obviously, uh, you need to subtract the depreciation of the first year from the cost. So we get 80,000 when we subtract 100,000 minus 20,000, we get 80,000 gaining value at the end of first year. So now we will calculate the depreciation for the second year on this value. Eighty thousand, which is carrying value at the end of first year, multiply by twenty percent, we get the depreciation for the second year. So our answer is sixteen thousand depreciation for the second year. All right. So our depreciation for the second year is sixteen thousand. The answer is B. Now let's move on to uh, one more example, one more question. Pause the video and solve this question by yourself and then I will solve it for you. Okay, so in this question, our uh, on 1st July, we bought an asset for 15,500, all right? And we depreciate the asset on 20% per annum on reducing balance basis, all right? Uh, and you can just skip this line. Uh, I will explain you afterwards what does full year depreciation mean. But for now, you just see that it, um, his year end is 31 October 2006, all right? So he bought the asset on 1 July 2004, right? And the year end is 30, 31 October. Now let's see. In fact, uh, we don't need to solve this question right now because we need to study one more concept before we come on to this question. So let's just move forward.
Okay, let's just move forward uh, with our concepts, right? And then we will come on to the questions later on. Okay, now let's move forward um, onto the next thing that we are going to learn. Okay, so here it is written that if a non current asset is bought or sold in the period, there are two ways in which the which the depreciation could be accounted for. So okay, now when we whenever we buy the non current asset or whenever we sold the non current asset, there are two ways we can account for for the depreciation all right i will explain you by this example but first of all let's read this and then directly move on to the example to understand in the better way so what are the two ways provide a full year depreciation in the year of acquisition and non in the year of disposal all right this is the first point this means that uh in the year that you buy the asset in you charge depreciation for the whole year and when you sold the asset, you don't charge uh, the in the year which you sell the asset, you don't charge the depreciation in that year. For example, you buy the asset in 2010, you will charge the depreciation for the whole year of 2010. And then you sold the asset in 2014, uh, you won't charge any depreciation of 2014. I will explain you this by uh, an example. I know it's not possible to understand it like this. <clears throat> okay. So, and the second thing is monthly or pro data depreciation based on exact number of months. So, also I will explain this by an example. All right. Okay, now let's have a look at these two points through an example, all right? Let's just copy paste it here. Sorry, just wait. Okay, so what are the examples for this? Uh, first of all, it is written that provide a full year depreciation in the year of acquisition or non in the year of disposal. Now, what does this mean? For example, we bought an asset in 2010 for $1,000, all right? Sorry, just wait a second.
Okay, so we buy the asset uh, for 1000 in 2010 using straight line. We charge the appreciation 10% and residual value is $200. Okay, and life is five years. Now, for example, uh, if I tell you that you will sell the asset in 2014, all right, sell the asset in 2014, all right, you bought the asset in 2010 and you are selling the asset in 2014, all right. Now, what will you what will you do is uh, first of all you need to calculate the depreciation for uh for your first year. All right. For example, you bought the asset in uh two thousand ten, right? For example, you bought the asset in two thousand ten. Uh, for example, you bought the asset on one January two thousand ten. All right. I didn't mention one January, but just assume that you bought bought the asset on one January two thousand ten. <laughs> Sorry. So, what will be the depreciation for the first year now tell me what will be the depreciation for the first year obviously cost minus scrap value all right and you need to divide this by useful life which is five years um, sorry this is minus Okay, so you will get depreciation 160 for the first year. Okay, you get the depreciation for the first year, which is uh, 2010, and the depreciation is 160. All right, and now you know that using the straight line, the depreciation is same every year. It is constant every year when you use the straight line method. We have seen that in detail. <clears throat> so it's going to be uh, same in the 160 in 2011, same 160 in 2012, same 160 in 2013. <clears throat> but uh, in 2014, we won't charge any depreciation because according to our policy number one, we charge uh, we provide a full year depreciation in the year of acquisition. Year of acquisition means that when we buy an asset, we charge full year depreciation, all right? <clears throat> whether we buy on 1 January, whether we buy on 1 July 2010 or 1 January 2010, whatever date we buy the asset on, in the first year, we will charge full year depreciation, all right? And in the last year, when we are selling the asset, we won't charge any depreciation in the last year, all right? So that's what it means. So now if I tell you that what is our carrying value at the end of 2013, so how will we, how will you take out the carrying value? Simple is that, that uh, you will just 1000 minus 160, minus 160, you will just subtract the depreciations we took out, right? So we'll get the carrying value at the end of 2013, right? Or just say like this that uh, at the end of 2011, what is the carrying value? 1000 minus 160, right? So this is the carrying value at the end of 2011. And then again, 840 minus 160. This will be the carrying value at the end of 2012. And then again for 2013. So this is the carrying value at the end of 2013, okay? But for 2014, we won't charge any depreciation because they clearly told us that provide a full year depreciation in the year of acquisition and non in the year of disposal. So disposal means that we are selling in 2014, we won't charge any depreciation in, in, a, in our selling year. In the year of disposal, we won't charge any depreciation. All right, so that's what it means. When we will solve the examples, you will understand more clearly. But for now, you just need to know the, the meaning of this. That uh, what is the meaning of this? You charge full year depreciation in the year of acquisition. For example, we bought in uh, 2010. 
So we charge 160 depreciation in the year, uh, 2010, but we did not charge and Okay, so for now, you just need to understand this one, right? Sorry, uh, the screen sharing was paused. So for now, you just need to understand this for the, uh, okay, for this one. Uh, when we will solve examples, this concept will get clear. So what is the second policy? And now let's look at the second policy, which is really important. The second policy is more used commonly. So let's solve an example for the second policy. First, let me write, and then I will explain you. Okay, now, so what's our example now? We are using the policy number two in this one, all right? Monthly or pro rata depreciation based on exact number of months. So now let's have a look. How will we calculate the depreciation? All right. So let's assume that this is straight line method, all right? So we bought the asset on 1 January 2020. All right. Uh, we bought the asset on 1 January 2020. All right. So let's calculate the depreciation for the first year. Our cost is $2,000. Our scrap value is 200. And we will divide this by our useful life. We will get the depreciation for first year, which is 360. All right. So now uh, what you need to look here is that a pro data basis means that we need to have a look per month, right? Like how many months we use the asset this year. Now this 360 is the depreciation for the full year. All right. This is the depreciation for full years. Full year means this is the depreciation for the 12 months. All right. So now if you look uh, in 2020, we bought the asset on 1 June. So how many months do we have remaining in uh, 2020? We have, uh, we use the asset in June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So we have exactly seven months, all right? June to December. We use the, we bought the asset on 1 June. We started using the asset on 1 June and we use the asset this year for the seven months, all right? So what will be the depreciation for for this year seven months because 360 was for full year right so if we, if i tell you like uh we need to take out the depreciation for the seven months because we only used the uh asset for seven months right so how will we take out the depreciation for seven months 360 was for a full year right so se seven by 12. that's how you will get the depreciation for the first year all right two zero two zero because we bought the asset on 1 June. So in pro rata basis, we look at the exact number of months we use the asset for, all right? So for example, we use the asset for June to December here. So that's why we took out 210 for 2020, all right? Two, uh, 210 is our depreciation for 2020, all right? Now let's move on to the 2021, all right? <clears throat> Okay, uh, so by mistake, I wrote here they sold the asset on 1 October 2014. Uh, sorry, this is not 2014, this is 2024. All right, let's correct the mistake. Uh, this is not 2014. All right, wait a minute. Okay, just, uh, just, um, don't assume that this is 2014, this is 2024. So all the asset on 1 October 2024, all right? Don't uh, confuse this with 2014, all right? <clears throat> okay, so for now, uh, to, for uh, now we need to calculate the depreciation for 2021, all right? Uh, we are using for the full year, right? Like we have the asset uh, in the full year of 2021. So what was the depreciation for the full year we calculated above? That was 360. So we'll take full year depreciation for 2021 because we are using from January to December full year because we are not selling the asset in 2021, right? We are selling the asset in 2024, 1st October 2024. So in the same way for 2022, we will take full year depreciation. All right, January to December. 
in the same way for 2023, we will take full year depreciation. Okay, now in 2024, in 2024, we are selling the asset on 1 October 2024, all right? So how many months did we use the asset for 2024? Tell me, from January till September, right? 30 September. How many months are from 1 January till 30 September? Because, because we are selling the asset on 1 October, right? So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. So these are nine months that we use the asset for. So how will we take out the depreciation for these nine months? 360 is for full year, right? And we need it for nine months. So nine by 12, we get the depreciation for the 2024 is 270. All right, January to September. All right, so that's what pro data basis mean. We need to calculate the depreciation for the exact number of months. So that's what we mean by pro data basis. So I hope this is clear now and uh, you will further understand this from the examples and the questions we solve when we solve the questions, all right? So you, you don't need to worry if you don't, if you didn't understand it clearly, you just don't need to worry. Uh, we will obviously solve many questions for this one and you will get familiar with it, all right? So now let's move on to one example. Okay, so our example is uh, V. V is a uh, name of trader. V a trader purchased an item of plant and one for one thousand dollar on first August two thousand one. All right, uh, we purchase. Uh, we purchased a item of plant for one thousand dollar on one first August two thousand one. The dates are very important. Okay, you need to look at the dates very carefully. So we bought the asset on. 1st August 2001, right? Which depreciates on reducing balance method at 20% per annum. Remember, we are using reducing balance method, all right? 20% per annum, all right? So what are they asking now? They are asking what is the depreciation charge for each of the first five years if the accounting year end is 31 July, all right? So now, what does this mean? Okay, so first of all, if our accounting year end is uh, 31 July, this means that um, when did our year start? Obviously, our year started in, uh, we bought the asset on 1st August 2001, right? And our accounting year is 31 July 2002, right? So, this is our accounting year, 1st August 2001 to 31 July 2002, all right? We bought the asset on 1st August 2001, and our accounting year end is 31 July. So these are 12 months. 1st August 2001 to 31 July 2002, these are, our, these are our 12 months, all right? Okay, so now, so now let's have a look for the first year, year one. How do we calculate the depreciation using reducing balance for the first year? Now let's have a look. <clears throat> okay, so we bought the asset for $1,000, all right? And 20% is our percentage for reducing balance. We get the depreciation 200 when we multiply 20% with 1,000, all right? We got 200 depreciation charge for the first year, all right? <clears throat> Now, how do we calculate for the second year? Uh, for the second year, uh, in the same way, you know, we are using the reducing balance method. So we will subtract the depreciation charge of the first year from the cost. So 1000 minus 200, we get 800, the carrying value at the end of first year. All right, 800, we will get the carrying value at the end of first year. We will multiply that with 20%. We will get 160 depreciation charge for the second year. All right. Now, in the same way, uh, 800 hours of our carrying value minus 160, the depreciation charge, we will uh, multiply 20%, we will get 128 for the year three. All right. Then again, in the carrying value, uh, 640 was our carrying value at the end of year three because of 800 minus 160 is 640. 
So the carrying value at the end of year three was 640 minus the 128 depreciation charge multiplied by 20%, you get 102. All right. I hope you are now comfortable using the uh, reducing balance method. All right. So in the same way for the last year, uh, carrying value 512 minus 102, the depreciation charge and multiply 20%, you get the depreciation charge 82 for the last year, year five. All right. And that's what they asked us in the question. What is this depreciation charge for the first five years if the accounting year end is 31 July? So we have given them the uh, depreciation charge for the five years, all right, using the reducing balance method. Okay, now you must be uh, wondering what is this accumulated depreciation, all right? So now accumulated means that uh, how much we depreciated up till now, right? For example, you bought a car in 2020, all right? Just assume that you bought a car in 2020 and your depreciation for 2020 was 100, all right? Then again, uh, for, 2020 for, uh, for 2021, your depreciation was, for example, 150. Okay, uh, now 2022, your depreciation was, for example, 200. Now, I ask you, what was your accumulated depreciation at the end of 2022? So, you will add all of the depreciations, like you will add 100 for 2020, then you will add 150 for the 2021, then you will add 200 for the 2022. You will add add all these and you will tell me the answer. Uh, what, will the, what will be our answer? Our answer will be 350, right? Sorry, 200 plus 150 plus 100 will be our answer, right? So that's going to be 450, right? So 450 is your accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation means depreciation up till now, right? So for example, in year one, our depreciation was 200. So our accumulated will stay the same, 200. But now for the second year, uh, the depreciation is 160. So we will add up 200 in that. So 200 plus 160 will be 360, okay? Now for year three, our depreciation is 128. So we will add 128 in 360, we will get 488. In the same way, in 488, we will add 102 depreciation for the next year, we will get 590. Uh, and for 590, we will add depreciation for the year five, we will get 672. So at the end of year five, our accumulated depreciation is 672. All right. In the same way, at the end of year two, it is 360. At the end of year three, it is 488. So like that, okay? So this is what our accumulated depreciation is. So I hope this is clear. Huh? Okay, so now we have a question. Uh, we have a question. Care has been uh, running a successful nursery school, Little Little Lambs, I think, since 2001, all right, since 2001. Kay bought the following assets as the nursery expanded, okay. So he is buying some assets. Uh, he is buying a new oven for the nursery kitchen at a cost of 2000 okay. He bought an oven for a kitchen at $2,000, okay. And he purchased this on, uh, what was the date? The date was 1 December 2004. All right, 1 December 2004. Remember the date. He bought a new oven for $2,000 on 1 December 2004. All right. And then he bought minibus for $18,000. He purchased that on 1 June 2004. All right. Now, let's have a look. Uh, Kai depreciates the oven at 10% straight line and minibus at 25% reducing balance. Okay. So now he is depreciating the oven at straight line and he deposited minibus at 25% reducing balance method, okay? And it is written that a full year depreciation is charged in the year of purchase and not in the year of disposal. So that's our point that we just learned <clears throat> few minutes back that we will charge full depreciation in the year of purchase, but we won't charge any depreciation in the year of disposal, all right? So now let's have a look how this works. 
<clears throat> okay. So first of all, we will have a look for uh, oven. Okay. No, so no. What is the requirement? The requirement is what is the total depreciation charge for the year ended thirty one December? Sorry, thirty one October two thousand six. So now tell me that if your year year is ending thirty one October two thousand six, so when did your year start? Twelve months back, right? So your year started must be one November two thousand five. One November two thousand five. And it it ended on thirty one October two thousand six, right? Okay, so I hope you need you know this how to uh know your year and like they told you that your year in is thirty one October two thousand six, right? So just come twelve months back and that's your uh first November two thousand five. Your year started on one November two thousand five, and your year ended on thirty one October two thousand six. All right. Okay, so now um, for for oven, first of all, we will have a look for oven. All right, so we let's come back to the question. We bought an oven for two thousand dollar. Okay, and and we purchased that on one December two thousand four. All right. Okay. So uh, what will we do is that. <clears throat> okay what will we do is that uh, for oven the cost was 2000 um, and we were not given a scrap value you know that we use a straight line formula cost minus residual value divided by useful life uh, but we are not given with the residual value so we will take it as zero all right so just cost 2000 minus zero and multiply it with uh ten percent because you are uh this time you are not given with useful life you are given with percentage for straight line so just simply multiply two thousand multiply ten percent all right you will get two hundred depreciation for the oven all right and in 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 this one like in straight line you know that uh depreciation is constant per year all right. Oh, okay, so this was our depreciation for O1. That's how we calculate the depreciation for O1, simple, using the straight line formula, all right? Okay, now let's move on to the uh, minibus. In minibus, we are using, uh, we are using reducing balance method, all right? And we purchase minibus for 18,000, okay? And 25% was our reducing balance, all right? So what we do is, what we do is, <clears throat> okay, uh, sorry. First of all, for oven, uh, we calculated our depreciation as 200, right? So this 200 is constant. Like for 2004, uh, it will be 200. And for 2005, it will also be 200, right? So, and for 2006 also, it will be 200. So that's fine, right? Like for all three years, because we know that using straight line method, uh, our depreciation is constant per year. So for 2004, for 2005 and 2006, uh, the depreciation for Owen will remain the same. All right, I can write it here. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Now let's come on to the minibus, all right? Okay, when did we purchase a minibus? <clears throat> uh, we purchased the oven on 1 December 2004, all right? So uh, we got the depreciation for oven, 200 was for 2004, 2005, and 2006, okay? We purchased on 1 December 2004, okay? We purchased on 1 December 2004, but uh, the policy is that we charge whole year depreciation in the year of acquisition. 
So that's why we charged whole year depreciation for 2004 as well, because that was our, uh, that was our policy to charge full year in the year of acquisition and non in the year of sale. All right. So even though we purchased in the last one, December, like full 2004 passed and we purchased the, uh, we purchased the oven in the last month on 1st December, 2004, but still we charge full year depreciation because that was our policy. Okay, so 200 depreciation was charged for 2004, 2005, 2006, and so on. It will be charged 200 per year. All right. <clears throat> okay, now let's come on to the minibus. For minibus, uh, 2000, uh, the minibus was purchased on 1 June 2004. Okay, and now we know that uh, we need to charge full year depreciation for uh, year of acquisition. 2004 was our year of acquisition, right? So for 2004 minibus, how do we calculate the depreciation? Simple is that. Um, we will use the reducing balance method now. So 18,000 is our cost. And what percentage we need to take? Uh, we need to take 25% reducing balance method. So simple, 18,000 multiply 25% and you will get 4,500, all right? For the first year, you will get your depreciation as 4,500. Okay. Now, in the same way, for the second year, 2005, um, now what will we do is, for 2005, simple, we will take out the carrying value first. Um, 18,000, the cost, 18,000, minus the depreciation for the first year, 4,500, and multiply that by 25%, you get the depreciation for the second year, which is 3,375. All right, so I hope you are comfortable with this now. Okay, now let's calculate it for 2006. In the same way, uh, now our carrying value at the end of 2005 was 13,500. Okay, how do how do we calculate it? 13,500. Simple cost minus the depreciation for the 2004. So that was our 18,000 minus 4,500. So 13,500 carrying value, and subtract the depreciation of the second year, which was 3,375. And we got, uh, and we got 13,500. Okay, so now 13,500 minus 3,375 multiplied 25%. Simple, you will get 2,531 depreciation for 2006. All right, we just applied reducing balance method as we learned above. All right, so we got the depreciation for all three years 2004, 2005, and 2006. All right, so now let's come back to the requirement. What was our requirement? Our requirement was uh, to calculate the total depreciation charge for the year and the 31 October 2006. All right. So what was our year? Our years was this one. 1 November 2005 to 31 December 2000. Sorry, 31 October 2006. All right. So for this year, what will be our total depreciation? We saw that for Owen, our depreciation in 2006 was 200, right? For every year, it was 200. So for 2006 also, it will be 200. Okay. And for minibus, what was our depreciation in 2006? 2531. So we will add these both, 200 plus 2531. We will get total depreciation in 2006, all right? All right, so our total depreciation for uh, year and the 31 October 2006 will be 2731, okay? That's how we calculate the total depreciation. I hope this is clear. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question. Um, and the next question is uh, the following information relates to Bengals and Smash, a car repair business. All right. So for the machine one, we are given the cost 12,000. For the machine two, we are given the cost 8,000. The purchase date, respectively, 1 August 2005 and 1 October 2006. All right. 
and the depreciation method is 20% straight line pro data and for machine two, the depreciation method is 10% reducing balance on pro data. Now, what does pro data mean? Uh, pro data means that simply uh, we need to calculate the depreciation for the exact number of months from the purchase date uh, till the date uh, when till when we are required to calculate. All right, pro data we have already studied. I have given you example before. All right. So now let's solve this question. So they are asking us what is the total depreciation charge for the year ended 31 December 2005 and 2006. All right. So so for the first year, uh, if the year ending year ending is 31 December 2005, so that means that our year started on 1 January 2005. Right. So our first year will be 1 January 2005 to 31 December 2005. Uh, and our second year will be 1 January 2006 to 31 December 2006. All right. So these are our years. For what? For for these years, we need a depreciation charge. All right. And remember that we are calculating this time on pro data basis. <clears throat> so what we will do is, uh, first of all, we will solve for the machine one. All right. So machine one was 12,000 cost. And we bought on 1st August 2005, all right? So this means that uh, we are on pro data basis, on pro data basis, we will, how will we calculate the depreciation? So we use the machine in 2005, tell me how many months did we use the machine? In 2005, how many months did we use the machine? If we purchase the machine on 1st August 2005, so we use the machine for August, September, October, November, December, 2005. So how many months? August, September, October, November, December. So these are five months, right? So we need to calculate this on pro, pro data basis. That's why we counted the number of months for 2005, for year ended 2005, all right? We purchased the machine on 1st August, 2005, and the year end is 31 December, 2005. We, for, so, so in 2005, we used the machine for five months. Right. So how do we calculate now? Simple is that uh, you will do your cost is 12,000, right? 20% uh, is your straight line and you will multiply this for five by 12. All right. So you will get 1,000. I have already written here 1,000. All right. So for 31 December 2005, your depreciation is 1,000 for this year. All right. Okay, now for second year, for, uh, we are calculating for machine one, right? So now let's calculate the depreciation for machine one for the second year. Now second year is 31 December 2006 and our year starting from 1 January 2006, year ending on 31 December 2006, right? So now we put, we are using the machine one for the full year in, the, in 2006, right? Because we purchased in 2005, right? So in 2005, we used it for five months and for the 2006, obviously we will use for a full month, uh, f sorry, full year. In 2006, we will use for the full year. So simple, um, for the second one, you will simply multiply a cost with a straight line 20% and that's full month. So, uh, sorry, that's full year. So you, you don't, you do not need to pro data basis. All right. So simple is that, that how you will calculate. For the second year, for 2006, how will you calculate? 12,000, multiply 20%. And if you want to do, you can do it like this, 12 by 12. All right, because you are using the full year. Even if you don't do 12 by 12, you'll get the same answer, 2,400. All right, so machine one, uh, 2006, the depreciation will be 2,400. All right, I hope you got this. Okay, let me repeat this. Uh, First of all, they asked you the depreciation for the year and the 31 December 2005. So you looked at machine one, you purchased the machine one on 1st August 2005, right? So in 2005, how many months did you use the machine? You used for five months, August, September, October, November, December. And, and in the December, the year was ended. So in 2005, you only used the machine one for five months. But in 2006, you used the machine one for full year. Right, so that's how we calculated uh, for first year machine one, 
and for second year machine one. All right. Now let's move on to machine two. Okay. So. <clears throat> So now for machine two, um, the cost was eight thousand. All right, and we when did we purchase the machine? We purchased the machine on first October two thousand six. All right. So what does that mean? That means that we did not we did not even have a machine in two thousand five. So our depreciation in two thousand five will obviously will be zero because we didn't even have a machine in two thousand five. So in two thousand five, our depreciation for machine two will be zero. Because we purchased the machine in 2006 itself on 1 October 2006. All right. Okay. So for machine one, the first year, the depreciation is zero. In 2005, it is zero because we did not even have a machine. Now let's move on to 2006, the second year. 1 January 2006 to 31 December 2006 for machine two. How do we calculate? Simple. We will apply a reducing balance method this time. So 10% reducing balance we need to apply. And we purchase that the purchase date is first October 2006. So on pro data basis, you need to count number of months uh you purchased the machine to on one October. So how, how many months you are using when using the machine? October, November, and December, right? And December 2006, the year in, year is ended. So how many months did we use the machine? Three months, October, November, and December. Right? So let's calculate the value for um reducing minus method three months. All right. So how do we calculate this? Simple is that um, if you look at here, my calculation 8,000, um, you know that for the first year, you simply calculate in the same way, uh, 8,000 into 20%. Uh, okay, that was 20%, right? Let me confirm. No, sorry, reducing balance method was 10%. All right, so 8,000 into 10%. And this is for the full year. And if you need it for three months, so obviously we will do three by 12. You will get the depreciation 200. All right. So that's how we calculate 200 uh, for this is the value of machine two depreciation for the 2006. Okay. So 200 is your answer for 2006 machine two depreciation. All right. So that's how we solve pro data, pro data basis question, right? So I hope this is clear till now. Okay, uh, that's it for the first video. Uh, we will continue our lecture in the second video. Um, I hope you got this. Uh, this lecture was helpful for you. Uh, do let me know. If you need any help, you can contact me on my WhatsApp number. Uh, here is my WhatsApp number. You can also contact me for live classes or if you need any assistance related to any subject. Thank you so much.